Welcome. All right. Well, hey, everybody. Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. I got a vapey thing that I wanted to talk about today. This is the Bravo Watofo RTA. It's it's good. It's it's pretty good. It's a pretty good RTA. It's not revolutionary. There's nothing really super innovative about it. This is an RTA that is a solid RTA that is entering a world of other just very solid RTAs. It's an overall really good vaping experience. It's got a few little quirks here and there, especially when it comes down to the wicking, but we're going to get to that in one second because what we're going to do right now is go up close as we often do. I'm going to re-wick this. I'm going to show you top to bottom how it goes together. So let's do that now. Go. <clears throat> All right. Yeehaw. Well, this is the Bravo RTA. Just going to take a real quick look at it from top to bottom. It does come with its own drip tips, but my favorite DHD nub tips fit in this tank perfectly. So that's what I've been using. All the surfaces that you need to grip are knurled. The top where you're going to unscrew this and fill up your juice is knurled for nice grippiness. And the bottom AFC is knurled as well. And it stops in the full open and stops in the full close and doesn't click anywhere in between, but it's smooth enough, it's glidey enough, and it's actually grippy enough to stay where you want to put it. You want to rock your airflow like that? You totally can. You shouldn't have any issues with it sort of accidentally adjusting itself, but if you do, it's not the end of the world. It's easy enough to just kind of get back into place. All comes apart for real easy cleaning. Glass comes off. You can clean this all up, rinse it out. All the O-rings hold on very nice. In fact, this O-ring on the top Oh, it gives it a little bit of a click. It gives it just a little bit of a click when you press it on there. It feels very satisfying. You can see it branded right there. Bravo RTA. There's that 510 pin on the bottom. Nice. Very nicely protruding past the threads. Very nice and static. And that's what we're looking for in a 510 pin. Closer look at that adjustable AFC. You can see the air goes in right there and then comes up through these two tubes pointed directly at your coils. I really like this deck. It's kind of a hover clamp system that is very easy to build on. You do have four screws that you need to deal with, but it's still very easy to get your leads in there, clamp them down, and clip them off. Now, wicking this isn't the easiest thing in the world. You have these little holes right here. Your wick's going to go through, down into the hole, through, down into the hole. A lot like those old uh, Coil Art Mage GTAs. These are the coils I just have in here right now. These are some simple fused Claptons, and I position them right over this airflow. I want the airflow going in and boom, right there, right at your coil. In an ideal world, I would probably grab this coil and lower it just a little bit down so it's a little bit more even. In fact, I might drop both of these down just a hair. These coils are glowing beautifully, nice and evenly. So what I'm going to do real quick is attempt to wick this on camera. Let's make this happen. Yeah, you see what happened right there? I did not leave this wick long enough, and when I press it into that hole right there, it doesn't quite go down all the way, and that, that can lead to flooding. I really should have measured my wicks. I kind of just eyeballed it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't like that. I'm going to re-wick that side. But honestly, what you're going for is something like that, just in and down so you can see your wicks underneath, in and down. Uh, cut a little short. Uh, cut a little short. Okay, cool. Well, it has been wicked and it has been juiced. Oh, there's the vapors. But we're not done yet. I'm just going to fill up this tank and then we can get out to normal view and then we can vape it. First things first, this just screws right on. So yeah, we got an assembled and filled Bravo tank. What we're going to do right now is get back out to normal view. We're going to vape this guy. Good, very, very nice vape. I've been having a great time with this Bravo RTA. And like I said, it's not revolutionary. You know, there's nothing really super innovative about it. Maybe the deck, it's kind of got that floating clamp deck. That's It's real easy to build on, but it's nothing we haven't seen before. There's a lot of clamp decks out there. Even in RTAs, there's a lot of clamp decks out there. This Watofo Bravo just happens to do it 
pretty good, real solidly. It's a very simple, straightforward RTA. Everything, looking at this, even if you're uh, even if you're a new vapor, even if you're an experienced vapor, you can look at this RTA and you can kind of figure out, oh, okay, the base goes on, here's the AFC, that's where my coils go, here's where the wicks go, here's how I fill it up. Very simple, very straightforward. Now the airflow at full open is quite open. It is open. It is more open than a lot of dripping atomizers that are out there. This Bravo tank, more than a lot of other RTAs, really does simulate sort of a very open, wide open, sort of clouds bro clouds, clouds chasing experience with your vape. And 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 with the airflow full open, it's, it's too open, okay? It's even too open for me. So what I like to do is I honestly close it down about halfway. And what that does is it smooths out the airflow just a little bit, creates more of a restricted lung hit experience, and kind of ups the flavor a little bit. One of my big gripes with this Bravo RTA, because it's so big, it's a 25 millimeter RTA, and it's got a fairly big chamber in there because it has a fairly big deck on the inside, the flavor is eh, kind of less than impressive. It's not bad by any means. I have a Fizz in here from, where's the bottle? Yeah, Fizz, Fizz Lima. This is a juice that I have vaped a lot of and I didn't know I still had a bottle left and I've been vaping out of this Bravo and it doesn't taste quite as good as I've had it in the past. I can still taste it, you know? I know that I'm vaping the Fizz Lima juice. It's like a lemon lime soda juice. It's quite delicious. I know that that's what's juice is in here and I can taste that juice, but it's not as saturated as I would like it to be. The overall flavor experience from this, while fine, you'll still be able to taste your juice, is a little bit lacking in my opinion. And the only way that I've found to improve the flavor on it is to close down the airflow about halfway. Yes, much better, much better flavor, a little bit warmer of a vape, and a little bit more restricted of a lung hit. Big bonus for me is that my favorite DHD nub tips fit in here. It's a goon compatible, uh, you know, opening on the top here. It comes with its own tips, but I like to use the, uh, you know, I like to use the DHD tips. They're my favorite, and whenever those fit in a device or an atomizer or a tank, it just, uh, it, it gains a little bit of brownie points in my book. Now, are you gonna need your vape budget hands for the Watofo Bra? Bravo RTA. Eh, no, I would say definitely not. Clicking around the internet, I found it anywhere from $25 to $30. I found a few places like Vape Sourcing and Gear Best, which I have never purchased from. I've heard mixed, you know, mixed reviews for those particular vendors. So, you know, shop at your own risk, but they have it for real cheap, like $24. And I, and I know I say this a lot, but that's one of those price points. $24 bucks is almost inexpensive enough to buy it just to try it out. Now, if we're going to play the Aliens game or the FDA game where they come and take everything I have and I have no vape gear left, is the Watofo Bravo an RTA I would seek out and buy? Uh, probably not, but that doesn't mean it's not a great RTA. It's a very solid RTA. Can't stress that enough. It's very solid. It's another very solid RTA in a time when we have a lot of very solid RTAs. One thing I wanted to mention real quick before we wrap this video up is with the airflow full open, this can handle a lot of wattage. You can get a very warm, warm vape from this RTA. And if you've wicked it correctly, which the wicking is always a little bit of a balancing act, right? And when you wick this correctly, it can handle a lot of wattage and a lot of airflow. These coils on here right now are some uh, alien coils. I don't remember exactly where they came from, but they came out to 0.13. And right now I've got this sitting nicely at about 100 watts with the airflow full open. It is a warm cloud chasing vape experience. And I'm certainly not saying that you can like, uh, you know, chain vape it at 99 watts watts with a 0.13 and your wicking will never fail on you, you do have to maybe give it a little bit of a rest. You have to give it a second for your wicking to catch up, but I've been able to take like three or four big pulls in a row with a 0.13 at 99 watts with the airflow full open. And like I said, it's warm 
and it is cloud chasey. And with that said, I'm gonna turn this back down to about uh, 80 watts. That's where I was rocking it before. Turn the wattage down, turn the airflow down, and to me, that is a much better, uh, much more preferred. I don't wanna say better. It's a much more preferred for me, for Nick Grim Green. It's a much more preferred vaping experience from this particular tank. Okay, enough rambling. I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna throw some links down in the description to where you can check out this tank if you are interested. But yeah, that's what I got, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, let's keep on vaping. There was a few in there, I think.